So our next speaker, I only just met him, uh, looks like a movie star actually, I was quite startled, but in fact he's the world's leader in uh, the design of handheld products. Ergonomics is his game, aesthetics is his heritage, he manages beautifully to combine both you know, the stuff he's produced, the Microsoft mouse, the Gatorade bottle, the Sears sewing machine. Where's Bryce? Bryce Ryder. Well, I know, to, to begin with, I know one person who needs their uh, prescription and their eyewear changed. Um, I want to talk about the design of everyday products, the things that we love to hate, and the things that drive us crazy. And I want to do a little bit of a commentary on why they don't have to be that bad. So let me find my clicker here. And since I am an ergonomic uh, geek, just the first uh, comment is that you have to press down to go ahead, which is counterintuitive. So if I go in the wrong direction, please tell me. So I want to talk about design, of course, uh, but I also can't talk about design until I talk a little bit about ergonomics. Now when I say ergonomics, usually what happens is that your eyes glaze over and you say, oh no, that gray, steely stuff of the past, that's really boring. Well, I'm not talking about that old ergonomic stuff, because that even puts me to sleep. I'm talking about the new ergonomics. I'm talking about things that work the way this works. And since I'm a hand guy, the way these things work sounds fairly straightforward. I think this is an interesting question to ask yourself. You know, what is good design? And something that I would encourage you to do after I'm done is turn to the person to your right and tell that person what's your favorite best design product that you own. You've got one thing that you love that you tell everyone to keep their hands off and that makes you feel like a thousand bucks when you use it. So I'm curious what that is. Now I want to talk about a day in the life and that's kind of a, an interesting way to think about how design impacts you throughout the day. And there's no escaping design. Everything in our environment is designed. So from the moment that you reach over and hit that snooze bar or kind of fumble to hit the snooze bar and if you don't hit it kind of makes you mad a little bit, you're a little grumpy. Then you go into the bathroom and you're halfway in a coma. You try to brush your teeth or you grab, a, uh, grab something that's slippery and it drops, it chips your uh, ceramic floor or it breaks. So now you're really grumpy. But what you did remember to do was flick the coffee maker in the morning and the beans were ground and as you walk into the kitchen the aroma of coffee starts to penetrate your nose. You say, ah, there is, there, is lo there is hope here for this day. Now I have about 40 or 50 coffee mugs, but I always choose the same one every morning. I'm sure you do. And why do you do that? Because the coffee tastes so darn good in that one mug, <laughs> right? And if you put it in any other mug, it tastes awful. It's like I can give you a pizza from Domino's and put it on some nice dinnerware, or I can give it to you out of the box and I will guarantee you that it'll taste ten times better on the dinnerware. How's that happen? Well, it's the whole experience. These are some things that drive me crazy, and I would be hard-pressed to find someone in here who doesn't agree. All right? I brought some. This is one of my favorites, aspirins. All right? You buy the aspirin because you have a headache or you have an ache or a pain. You try to get into the thing. The box is really not that, that easy to get into. Then you get into the, the, uh, the little thing, the little container. Then you've got to push and turn. Hey, these are not only child-proof. These are people-proof, all right? This does not work. Now, sure, it keeps kids out. But what about parents? But, you know, that's the, that's the easy way out. What about me? You know, I'm not 90 years old, and I don't have arthritis in my hand. These are hard to use, and there's no reason why they need to be this bad. All right, so now I get it open. Oh, no. All right? Where's the tab? All right, how do you get into this? Well, we've done research on this, and what you find is that people have their own special tools. All right? 
People carry a pen. People use corkscrews. And it's unbelievable the contamination that goes on. But anyways, what they should write on these things, if you don't have a headache, you will after you try to get into the package. <laughs> what else have we got up here? Oh, let's go to this, all right? Do I have any of these? No, I don't. Here's another example, the foil packs. And now to make them really safe for us dummies out here, us stupid consumers, they put another layer on the back. So you have to peel that back. God help you if you've chewed your fingernails, you know, you can't get into it. You know, by the time you get in there, you've pulverized the pill. Where's the sensibility in this packaging? They have forgot about the human factor. It doesn't make any sense. All right, so now you're out of the house. Let's travel a little bit, right? See how humane travel is. Well, I'm sure you'd probably choose the car on the right. Well, maybe not, you know. I'm a car freak. I'd choose the car on the right over the little one on the left. You know, it's got a little bit more style and class. But look what they did to it on the inside. The iDrive system on BMW is so controversial. If you're young and you grew up with computers, you get it. But most of the people who can afford to buy this hardware are 102 years old, because that's how long it takes you to save up for it. <laughs> By the time you get in the car, that little round thing in the top, that's your mouse controller down here that you, if you want to turn the heat up or turn on the radio, you have to go through the menu, you know, over, left, down. And by the time you get to the radio station you want, you're in the ditch. <laughs> I tested one of these for BMW for a month. They shipped it. Um, they dropped it off at our place. I guess you know how to drive this because it doesn't even have the regular, you know, park, neutral, and reverse. But I won't go in on that. I said, no. I said, but don't tell me. I just want to figure it out. He said, well, the manual is in the, is in the glove box. I said, I don't want to know. It took me two and a half days to figure out how to change the radio station. And I refused to look at the manual. And I don't think I'm that stupid. You know, I'm probably representative of everyone in here. That's not right. This is the first time I've understood through the BMW dealership in St. Louis where I live, first time in their history that people have brought this car back and said, I'm returning the car. And they said, you can't return a car. This is not, you know, Sears where you return pants. No, you're taking the car back. I dumped 80 grand, 90 grand, and I can't figure it out. It is now your car. <laughs> How about this? Most of us here travel. I travel almost every week. You know, 20 years ago, this was a really cool way to travel. What has happened? Oh, the check-in, we do it ourselves now. We carry our own bags. Well, that's okay. You know, that's not, you know, unreasonable. But we get in lines like, uh, you know, a herd of animals. Uh, there's no humanity at the gate. We see pictures like this, you know, where things are so wonderful, but the reality is up on the right. <laughs> you know, if you go in through the threshold of a plane, usually on the left-hand side, there's a little plate. And the last two numbers are the year that the plate, or the uh, plane was made. It's scary to look at those numbers. We're riding on planes that are 15, 20 years old. They break your back. And listen, how many people, is there anyone here that the seats actually fit? You know, you get in those seats and it either does this or it does this, all right? So you see people with all these muffins that they wear around their collar. You know, it looks like they're getting ready for the accident, you know? <laughs> you know? I think the famous line is they'll be the uh, first one at the accident site because the plane is going right there. Manuals. All right. I brought some manuals. You know what they should stamp on these things? Is throw away as soon as you get them out of the box. Because you never use them. You've got one of these. These have permeated our society. You know, I can't leave town without it. You know, this is my lifeline to my office, my clients. But you tell me why. I need 220 pages to tell me how to operate something as simple as a cell phone. Has anyone read their manual front to back? Has anyone really figured out how to use all the technology? Well, let's look at my life a little bit deeper. This is what I carry on the road, my backpack. The plane goes down, it's going to look like 30 Radio Shack stores went down with it because <laughs> I'm not unusual, all right? And tell me why the, the AC adapter is bigger than my PDA. <laughs> Come on, you know, no one's thinking about my lifestyle. And all the, the, the technical people who are developing these products, you know, they're in the back room. And this is true, because I've seen it and I've been there. So, well, let's put this feature in. And you say, well, why? Said, because, because we can't. It only takes five more lines of code. 
well, do people really want it? And it's kind of like, well, why are you asking that stupid question? <laughs> it's noise in the system. If you look at the percentage of the technology that you literally use on a daily basis, my guess would be about 5 to 10 percent. But we're in this marketing game that if you don't have all the features, you know, but listen, there's so many products on the market that when you hit it right and you give them people just what they want, the thing sails off the shelf. From an ergonomic perspective, aside from the manuals, and here's the manuals that support that, all right? By the way, I, I, I lost count at around 1,500 page, pages. I think there's something like, uh, I counted uh, nine DVDs uh, just to operate everything that is in that pile, all right? I'm not going to read that. Give me a break. No one's going to read that stuff. Eating. I love to eat. Don't know too many people who don't. Doesn't it frustrate the hell out of you, though, when you want to get into your Fruit Loops and you try to get in there? Can anyone, anyone, un unless you have three hands, you know? And then, isn't that nice? And then half of the Fruit Loops are down inside the box, and you don't eat this in one day, so they go stale. So what do you do? Well, I'll just seal it up. Wow, that works great. And the cap, this always works, doesn't it, you know? <laughs> now, how about this? Let me go to the picture. There we are. Oreo cookies. You ever tried those? You know, you have one too many beers, you got to get out the Oreo cookies. <laughs> the reason why you eat the whole pound of cookies is because you cannot seal them, right? <laughs> That's what I tell my friends. What else we got? Oh, eating. G give me a break. You can't eat with these things, you know. You ever try to eat a steak with a plastic knife? You know, you're going to cut your arm off, you know, first before you ever get that meat in your mouth. And trying to chase those little peas with a fork, you know, with the tines that are about this long? You know, come on. But they're cheap to make. Packaging. Let's talk about this. I picked up this. You ever try to get into this stuff? Uh, how about this? I bought a, a, a memory stick from my computer when I was in New York City recently. And what I found is that I didn't have my jackknife, because you can't take your jackknife on the plane anymore, because you're going to take down a plane. So I had a corkscrew to try to get into one of these packages. They're virtually impossible. It doesn't have to be this way. I think this should be the kit that you get. Every time you get one of those things, you, it comes with scissors and it comes with Band-Aids. Honest to God fact, when I got here, I bought some of these props. I bought the scissors. The scissors were in one of the packs. All right, here's another one. We live with this stuff. You ever try to throw this away? And then it has that electrical charge on it, and you're walking. You know, two days later, it works. Hey, what's on your pants? Oh, styrofoam. Got a new computer. How about relaxing, you know? This is, the sh this is what you see in the Sony catalog. Come on. <laughs> That's not my house. I got six remote controls. You know, the batteries are dead in half of them. You know, there's three inside the couch that kind of dig into your back when you sit down. And then your eight-year-old son says, well, I just unplugged something at the back and it stopped, Dad. 